Okay. Tight ends. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Jeff Levy's offense, he, he lives in 11 personnel. So he, he plays, he plays with a tight end on the field. Now going back and watching his offenses at Ole Miss, he, he stays in 11 personnel a lot of time. So that means one back and one tight end, but he will also get in some 10 personnel, meaning one back, no tight ends, but he will also get in 12 personnel personnel, meaning one running back, two tight ends at this point from the conversations I've had, I think there are four main guys to talk about in the tight end room. And remember this group can expand. It is a long time between now and when this thing kicks off for the 2022 season. Like, a lot can happen. But I think we got to start the tight end conversation with your favorite. I mean, he's your guy, Braden Willis. Go. He's had a really nice offseason. He's had a great start to spring ball. They think he can be a, a significant weapon for this offense at tight end. And, but clearly with Braden, it's all about him staying healthy. But he has done everything the staff has asked him to do, everything the new strength staff has asked, to do, asked him to do. He has become a leader. He's being more vocal as a leader now. And he looks the part. He certainly does. But it would be awfully, awfully beneficial for this football team if he could become a pass-catching weapon. Yeah. Yeah, and you know a lot of a lot of all all of the, I don't know how they use him is going to kind of depend on the spring. I'm guessing whenever they get a full grasp of what they've got in their tight end room um, and what the capabilities are, and I'm sure a lot of it is already predetermined just by the style of the offense. But if you've got special players at, at different positions, you're going to build your offense accordingly. So I think it's a big year for Braden Willis. We've seen what he can do when he's split out, what he can do in some mismatch situations. He's a gritty, tough blocker at the line of scrimmage. So, no, I agree. I think it's, I think it could be a really big year for him. He, I think he's faster and a better receiver than he's had the ability to showcase so far at OU. Hopefully, I, I, this, I agree. this is an opportunity. Yeah, I agree. I just don't know what's realistic to expect from him. I don't think he's all of a sudden going to be some 800 to a thousand yard receiver. Like, and maybe I hope I'm wrong. That would be awesome. But even if he's just a guy that becomes a huge red zone threat, right? Guy that ends up all of a sudden you look up, he's caught seven, eight touchdowns on the year or something like that. Like just adding that element, like a big physical tight end that can create mismatches with linebackers and safeties. Like that would be, that would be massive. For this team that's it's huge for any offense so i i just don't know what what type of jump to expect like i think we all agree there's going to be a jump but just how big is it going to be and i i don't know if we'll know till the fall right but one thing that i tell people all the time is you know when i was when i was a player when i moved positions I gained a ton of confidence in spring ball, a ton of confidence going through those reps, blocking the guys on the other side of the ball. And that gave me the confidence, the confidence and the belief in myself to be like, okay, I can, like, I can do this. Like I, I can, I can do this. I feel like this spring and I know Braden Willis has played a ton of football at OU, but this spring is going to be a confidence builder for him if it goes really, really well, which it sounds like it's, it's off to a good start. Like if he can, you know, catch some, some really nice balls in practice and make some big plays in practice. Like I, I think he, he knows the physical talents he has like, but you still got to go do it. Right. And I think spring is the perfect opportunity for him to prove not only to the new you know, the new offensive coordinator, but to himself, like, Hey, I can be a big time playmaker at the tight end position. And when, once you build that confidence up, then that, I mean, it goes a long way. It's so important. So I think this spring is especially important for him 
to build confidence as a big time playmaker for this team. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of that has started for him um, in the bowl game and, you know, throughout winter workouts where he's kind of transitioned into I almost like the one of like the senior leader. I, he's like kind of the guy on the team now, you know what I'm saying? He's like the, the elder statesman of the team. And I think that role is, is something that he can really build on in the spring. And uh, he's, he's totally comfortable and confident in himself as a football player. So yeah, you know, and I just, a lot of it is going to be determined on how much Levy has with the tight end in his offense, you know, and, like I said, he'll build some of that in there, but some off, some offenses just don't have much tight end. Like I wouldn't expect to start seeing Braden Willis as a split out receiver, just a, a, like as his main role. I think it's going to be boot play action, some of your more traditional type of tight end routes where he sees action, but that doesn't mean that has to be limiting. You can still do a lot from that type of role. And it's and you kind of made the point if Braden Willis shows Jeff Levy he can you know run short intermediate you know run vertical routes he's going to get him on the field and he's going to dial stuff up for him but it's like that's where in spring you got to show what you can do because you know there's no doubt coaches set players up for success right? Dialing up certain plays for guys, right? That's, that's what the best coaches do. They say, okay, how do my, how do I get my playmakers to football? Well, players also got to show coaches that they deserve to have stuff dialed up for them. You know what I mean? So I I think that is, that's going to be important for Braden in, you know, here in spring ball to show that he's a guy that they need to have on the field not only as a blocker, you know, he's, he's proven that he's more than capable of being a versatile piece, right? Inline guy, put him in the backfield, uh, that split zone action, all, all that stuff. He's shown that, but he hasn't necessarily shown consistently that he can be a big playmaker in the passing game. If he shows him that, dude's going to be on the field a whole lot. Yep, agree. Yeah, all right, next guy, Daniel Parker. And let, let me tell you, the staff loves Daniel Parker. He is, he's a blocking tight end, right? That it has been described to me as an absolute ass kicker. <laughs> and take, takes pride in going and knocking the absolute hell out of people. And they think from what they've seen so far, especially in these couple of spring practices, they think he can do more than just be a blocker. Right. And the, the comparison I'll make, and not just because he's one of my best friends, the way that the chiefs use Blake bell, where he's on the field a ton, right. But he's mainly out there as a blocker. But if you look at some of the balls that Blake has caught over the years with the chiefs, a lot of stuff in the flat, a lot of delayed routes, a lot of, lot of routes where the tight end's kind of the outlet, right? Where you're reading things deep to short in a progression and you just make some nice, easy catches and you rack up a couple of eight-yard, 10-yard gains, you move the chains. Like, I think Daniel Parker can be that blocking tight end that can also do some decent things in the short and intermediate passing game. You mentioned like off bootleg stuff like that. Like, there's always that guy in the flat, Ted, and he's always open. He's always open because defenses are by design, leave that guy open. So I I think Daniel Parker, he's going to be, he's going to be a guy that they want at the point of attack in the run game, but also a guy that they are more than comfortable with throwing him the football, got good hands, all that stuff. And they just, they just love this guy's attitude. Yeah. And as much as we know, Levy loves to throw the ball deep, you know, whenever you have deep route progressions that run the entire defense off down the field and you got a tight end that's sitting there in protection. Either they've pancaked the guy that he's blocking with the tackle or someone dropped into coverage and he hangs and waits and quarterback still got the ball, just natural little step outside a little bit and 
and catch that flat and be the outlet. And those those plays can turn into, like you said, uh, big time plays that keep the the drive alive, move the chains. And I just love that it sounds like there's going to be a heavy emphasis on running the ball physically. And when you have like brain Willis is, he's not a, I, I don't want to say that he's not a big tight end. I mean, he's got good size to him, but he's not like a physically imposing blocker. He's scrappy as hell as a blocker, but not physically imposing. But when you have two guys that kind of have that type of mindset, whenever it comes to blocking, that's a weapon, man. When you could dominate the edge of a defense with with great tight end blocking, that makes it really tough. If you defensively, if you can't win the edge, you got problems. Big problems. Big problems. So, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see like if Daniel Parker turns into just some kind of dominant guy there blocking on the edge. I mean, how, how much 12 personnel is Jeff Levy going to get in? Because if, if a guy is, I mean, if he's earning his way onto the field, like that's, that's where offense coordinators, they're, they're going to put their best players on the field. Like, how do I get my best 11 on the field as often as I can? If Daniel Parker turns into one of those guys, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what, what kind of personnel break down you know like what percentage they're in 10 or what percentage they're in 11 or 12 it'll be really interesting to see how that goes if if they feel like daniel parker's a guy that just needs to be on the field quite a bit well if you're 12 personnel and you've got the and we talk about this a lot about the the benefits of having guys that can do multiple things like if you're 12 personnel and you got two tight ends and they have the ability to absolute mush you at the line of scrimmage whenever they're in a pair on one side. You got to get out of nickel. And you got to get in, you got to get in base and you got to have an extra backer in there. Well, guess what happens when the extra backer jogs onto the field? Now you're a 12 personnel, but you're split out and that extra backer isn't up there winning the line, line of scrimmage like he's intended. He's out there covering Braden Willis in space. So that matchup ends up going back to the offense. So my guess is if 12 personnel can be that dangerous of a weapon for Jeff Levy, he'll stay in it all day long if they can win the line of scrimmage and, and force defenses to, to try to adapt. Yeah. Caden Helms, 6'5", 221, freshman. And I think he can help this season. I do. From everything I've heard, it sounds like he can be a weapon in the passing game because this guy's got size. He is an athlete. And he can be an absolute mismatch with linebackers and safeties. Now, of course, he's a freshman, right? He needs to add weight. He needs to add strength. Those, uh, duh. But he is a big-time talent. And one thing that I was told that I did like hearing was like, he is, you know, he's a weapon in the past game and he is going to be, they, they think he's going to be really damn good down the line, but That's awesome. he's also not afraid of contact, right? He, he will get in there and mix it up. So I, I do think Caden Helms is a guy that with his skill set, even as a young player where, you know, he's, he's got a, He's got a big frame, and there's, there's certainly room to grow, room for gains there. But I, I just think he, he's going to be too talented for him to not be on the field some, just it, as a pure threat in the passing game. Yeah, right. And to have young guys that can step up and physically – now, remember, these are, these are early arrivals, so supposed to be in the spring semester of their senior year. Right. The fact that they can step in there with the big boys on the line of scrimmage and, you know, not be worried about getting in there and, and hitting somebody, having some some physicality to them. That's big. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know how quick he'll find his way on the field. Um, it could be hard with with two tight ends in front of you that kind of offer the same thing. But at six, five, 220 plus pounds. 
if you could be a great wide receiving threat, receiving threat as a tight end, you you cannot teach size. You can't coach size. And at six five, that's hard for any defensive back to try and contend with. And especially at the nickel spot, who would be nickel or safety, who would typically be guarding that guy uh, when he split out. It's a big weapon. No doubt. And last guy, Jason Llewellyn. Checks, checking in at the freshman, checking in at 6'5", 260. So, uh, nice. I mean, all right, here we go. But when, when you look at him, he seems more of like a, I don't know if this is the best way to put it, but like a, a throwback tight end. Uh, a guy because tight end has become so associated with catching the football and making big plays in the passing game. Like, I feel like, you know, when we have a conversation about the best tight ends, like that's, that's what makes a great tight end now is if you are basically just a jumbo receiver, but for Llewellyn, like he, for me, he looks more of like an old school tight end. Like what, what I think, makes a good tight end where he can play in line. You, you can split him out maybe a little bit. He can play fullback. He can be an H back. Like he can do a little bit of everything. And if, if my read on him is correct, I, this is, this is going to be an interesting comparison, but as a guy that I played with and that I have an incredible amount of respect for, if he can be Brody Eldridge with, with better hands, then he's going to be one hell of a player at OU because a lot of people forget Brody ran four, seven, two at the combine. He got drafted in the fifth round and it was because he was one tough SOP. Yep. Yep. And I think Llewellyn, he's, he's got that type of makeup and real good athlete. I don't know if he's going to be some just, you know, devastating pass catcher, Right? I don't know if he's going to be a thousand yard tight end or anything like that. I don't think that's what he's going to be, but I, I just think he's a, he, he's going to be a good football player. And I, I could see him finding his way on onto the field a little bit in his freshman year, because if he can figure out you know, kind of the ins and outs of the offense, because uh, they're going to ask him a lot to do with the skill set he's got. And that's not easy, right? That's, that's going to be a lot on him mentally. If he can figure it out, I mean, this could be, you know, the start to a, a really, really solid career. At 6'5", 260 as a freshman, he's going to have to be careful. He's dangerously flirting with that tackle position, right? <laughs> I, from experience, I, I would say, yes, keep, keep that weight in check, Jason. And if you prove to be a very good blocker just know <laughs> that the conversation will be had now i i don't know I, I haven't seen the kid in person or anything like that so i don't know how well he moves you know how athletic he is just just from his high school stuff looks like a pretty solid athlete but yes if, if all of a sudden they're looking around going hmm who could the next center be oh hey jason what, what do you think about, hey, we, we want you to get maybe 270, 275, and then all of a sudden it goes up 280, 285. No, I, I, I don't think he's going to be an old lineman, but, yeah, you, you never know, I suppose. Yeah, that's, a, a, that's the gigantic freshman tied in. Big dude. That's big. That's big. And if, if he maintains some athleticism in that 260 – is like a really good 260 like there's there's just not a lot of tight ends in the big 12 of that that size so if you've got tight ends like daniel parker and Llewellyn of that size and are physical you just don't see that a lot now you see it a lot in the big 10 right and i think you'll probably see some more of that in the sec which is good but in the Big 12, that's a that can be an advantage over some of these defenses. Yeah, so we'll see we'll see how quickly the the young the young freshmen can earn their ways onto the field. So that that's definitely something we're going to continue to monitor.